If you're working in finance today, relying solely on outdated spreadsheets and guesswork is the fastest way to lose credibility and miss out on critical career opportunities. Without mastering the right financial models, you are not just estimating value, you are leaving money and crucial strategic decisions on the table. Today, we are diving deep into the basic financial modeling types. We are going to break down the seven types of financial models that every professional, from analysts to CFOs, must understand and master. Today, we'll cover the foundational three statements model and the forecasting model, then move into internal planning with the budgeting model. After that, we tackle critical valuation methods, the discounted cash flow model, the specialized leveraged buyout model, the complex M&A model, and finally, the essential project evaluation model used for investment decisions. Let's get started. The three statements model. Visual, graphic illustrating the dynamic link between IS, BS, and CFS. The three statements model is the absolute cornerstone of financial modeling. You cannot build complex transactions or detailed valuations until you master this foundation. The objective? The goal is simple but powerful. It integrates the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement into one dynamically connected financial model. This model is primarily used to forecast a company's future financial performance based on its historical results. The outcome provides a projection of a company's future financial health and gives critical insight into its liquidity, profitability, and solvency over time. How to build it? The process is structured and sequential. Step 1. Income Statement Forecast. You start by forecasting the revenues and costs, like operating expenses, payroll, and others. This requires solid assumptions about growth rates, pricing, and cost structures. Step 2. Balance Sheet Drivers. Based on your income statement forecast, you calculate key balance sheet positions. Think about things like accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory, and deferred tax assets liabilities. These are calculated as percentages of revenue or cost of goods sold. Step 3. The schedules. Next, you must build the supporting schedules, especially the capital expenditure and debt schedules, and then import the outcomes into the balance sheet. This ensures your balance sheet reflects future investments and financing activities. Step 4. Building the cash flow statement. Finally, you build the cash flows based on the changes in the balance sheet and income statement items. This links everything together and shows the true cash generation of the company. Mastering the three statements model is where a junior analyst stops being just a spreadsheet operator and starts becoming a financial strategist. The forecasting model. The forecasting model is fundamentally similar to the budgeting model, but it typically has a longer time horizon. Its core mission is predicting a company's future financial performance based on historical data and carefully chosen growth assumptions. The objective. The outcomes of this model include detailed predictions of future revenue, profit, and growth trends. This provides crucial guidance for strategic planning and decision-making and can even act as an early warning system for potential financial distress. How to build it? This model relies heavily on historical trends and intelligent assumptions. Data analysis. You must first use historical data to meticulously identify trends and growth rates. This isn't just a simple average. It requires judgment to determine if historical patterns are sustainable. Projection. Based on these trends, you project future revenue and expenses. This often involves scenario analysis to test best case and worst case outcomes. Statement creation. The outputs are used to create projected financial statements. Continuous update. Crucially, a forecasting model is a living document. You must regularly update the model as new data becomes available. This iterative process is what makes the model reliable. The forecasting model gives management a forward-looking perspective, essential for strategic thinking in a competitive market. The budgeting model. While the forecasting model is strategic, the budgeting model is a key operational tool used for internal planning. 
Its purpose is to create a detailed financial plan for business operations and helps in allocating resources for the upcoming year or years. The objective. A successful budgeting model provides a clear identification of cost savings or areas requiring additional investment. It also serves as the fundamental basis for performance evaluation throughout the year, allowing managers to compare actual results against the plan. How to build it. The process for a budgeting model is intensely data-driven and collaborative. Data collection. You start by collecting comprehensive operational data, customer data, sales pipeline data, and detailed hiring plans. You must also get information about the budget per department. Initial projections. Start with your revenue and cost projections. Departmental detail. Break down the overall budget into various departments or business units. This is where the model gets granular, ensuring accountability at every level. Integration. You then integrate the expected income statement, balance sheet and cash flow projections. Evaluation. Finally, a key ongoing step is to compare actual performance with the budget. This analysis drives corrective action. A well-structured budgeting model ensures every dollar spent aligns with the company's strategic goals. The discounted cash flow model. When it comes to valuation, the cornerstone of investment banking and corporate finance, the discounted cash flow model is the gold standard. The objective. The discounted cash flow model estimates the value of an investment or company based on its expected future cash flows, crucially adjusted for the time value of money. The primary outcome is the company's intrinsic value. The model also allows for sensitivity analysis results, helping us understand how changes in assumptions like cost of capital or growth rates impact that valuation. How to build it. This is a multi-step technical process. Inputs and assumptions. Research all company historical data, industry analysis, and set the inputs and assumptions. Forecast cash flows. You start by forecasting the free cash flows for the projected period. This requires projection of income statement and other categories such as reinvestments to get as free cash flow. Terminal value. Next, calculate the terminal value. This represents the value of the company beyond the explicit forecast period and is typically calculated using either a perpetual growth model or an exit multiple. Discounting. You must discount the cash flows, both the projected period and the terminal value, to the present value. This is done using the weighted average cost of capital. Valuation. The final step is to sum the present values of all cash flows to get the total enterprise value and finally equity value. Sensitivity. Run sensitivity analysis to check how your valuation is sensitive on assumptions change. The DCF model is indispensable because it forces the analyst to think deeply about a company's future performance, risk profile, and long-term potential. The M&A model. The merger and acquisition model is used to evaluate the financial viability of a potential merger or acquisition transaction. This goes beyond simple valuation. It's about understanding the financial impact of consolidation. The objective. The M&A model is used to analyze how the consolidation affects the combined company, including the critical accretion dilution of earnings per share. The model also estimates synergies post-merger and reveals the impact on financial metrics and ratios of the combined entity. How to build it. This requires combining and adjusting multiple models. Assumptions. First, develop detailed assumptions about the deal, such as the purchase price, the form of payment, cash, stock or debt, and any anticipated synergies. Standalone models. Build complete standalone models for both the acquirer and the target company. Combination. Combine the income statements of both entities. This is the trickiest part, requiring adjustments for synergies and the final financing mix of the deal. The M&A model is the essential tool for strategic finance, determining whether a deal creates or destroys shareholder value. The leveraged buyout model. The model is highly specialized, primarily used in the world of private equity. 
It is specifically designed to evaluate the financial feasibility of acquiring a company using a significant amount of borrowed money. The objective. The key outcomes are the feasibility assessment of transaction, the expected internal rate of return for the equity investors, and a detailed debt repayment schedule, which highlights the effects of leverage. How to build it. This model centers on financing structure and exit returns. Transaction. Perform target performance analysis and initial valuation. Financing assumptions. Create comprehensive assumptions about the purchase price, the debt and equity components, and the corresponding interest rates. Sources and uses. Build a sources and uses table. This table is critical for understanding where capital is coming from, sources, and exactly how it will be used, uses, to fund the transaction. Projections and exit. Forecast the company's financial statements under the new capital structure. Then model out the exit strategy and calculate the expected internal rate of return and equity multiple. For anyone aiming for a career in private equity, mastering the LBO model is a non-negotiable requirement. The project evaluation model. Finally, the project evaluation model is used across all industries to assess the economic and financial viability of a specific project, such as a new investment, a product launch, or an expansion initiative. The objective. The primary metrics used as outcomes include net present value, internal rate of return, economic value added, and the payback period. The model is also crucial for performing risk assessment through sensitivity analysis. How to build it. This process is focused purely on the project's cash flows. Define and estimate. Identify the project's lifespan, assumptions about growth, efficiency, profitability and risks, deliverables, and use this to estimate all associated costs and revenues. Calculate net cash flows. Make forecast of project revenues, capital expenditures, expenses, working capital, and then calculate economic flow of the project. Discounting. To account for the time value of money, you discount future cash flows to their present value. Analysis. The final step involves analyzing the key metrics like net present value, discounted payback period, internal rate of return, economic value added, and perform a sensitivity test to see how the project holds up under adverse conditions. The project evaluation model provides the objective financial proof needed to justify major capital allocation decisions. If you are serious about mastering these skills, you need practical tools and comprehensive instruction. We've put together a resource package that includes everything you need. You can find over 7 hours of video materials, 50 plus ready to use finance models in Excel, and over 400 pieces of actionable content. This package is designed to help you build these models from the ground up, ensuring you master every concept we discussed today. Check the link in the description to secure your access to these materials. Thank you for watching. If you want to get out from Excel and use AI for creating financial models, you can watch my next video or subscribe for more corporate finance insights.